I've been playing around with audio and video equipment since about the age of two. Seven years later, I started playing around with computer hardware. I am by trade a professional recording engineer. And what surprises me is people don't know how to do this. 99.9% .9 of everyone that subscribes and views to the Backyard Tech Channel will know exactly how to do this and will understand how to actually configure it. It's KIWS tutorial time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, how to get WaveLab 6 to auto start on the detection of an audio signal. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, it is KIWS tutorial time here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Monday morning, for TBIM I should say, and I am absolutely horrified about this, because I know this, and we know the saying here at the Backyard Tech Channel, if I know it, we all know it, I've got plenty of people who will probably not watch this video because they'll know exactly what I'm talking about, on Saturday I got an email from a viewer, who contacted me directly saying that he couldn't get WaveLab 6 to auto start on the detection of an audio signal, be it internal or external. I can't believe people don't know this. Like I said, I know this. So if I know it, everyone should know it. To give those that don't apparently an idea, there are multiple competing professional audio software packages out in the marketplace. You've got Adobe Audition, obviously Pro Tools is the big one, followed by Steinberg's Cubase, their multi-track recorder Nuendo, and WaveLab. And often I will use WaveLab to do something for the channel. Maybe it's um, music mixing or whatever, or promo making or something like that. So if I know how to get it to auto start, I would make the assumption that 100% of my viewers will know how to do this. Now, I am a massive rap for Steinberg's package, as we all know. I prefer Steinberg over Pro Tools any day, and I cop a hell of a ribbing for liking it, but I prefer Steinberg. Always have, always will. Especially when you hook it up to, which I assume most, most people are fairly familiar with, the RMEDAs, or ADs, sorry. Whereas with Pro Tools, you've obviously got your um, 002s, 003s, Mboxes, um, the DAWs that are you know two, three, four page long type scenarios, or um, a single you know 32 channel DAW that's running an embedded version of probably Pro Tools and controlled by a, a Mac of some sort. So for this KIWS tutorial video, as I said, I'm going to show you how to set up WaveLab to auto start on the detection of an audio signal. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're talking an external source, so line in, whether that's optical or digital, or from stereo mix coming off uh, a source from within your computer. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so there are a few things you're going to need to do before you start recording into WaveLab, alright? First thing you need to do is set set up your sound card on your computer, all right? So you open up your sound control panel and you can see there I've got microphone and stereo mix selected, okay? If I was going to record from a line in scenario, I would obviously select line in, but we're not doing that for this. We're going to do this, okay? Now, obviously can't play the music. Uh, it's obviously copyrighted, but we can have a look at how it triggers out, all right? So we're going to select Stereo Mix to auto start WaveLab, all right? So you open up your WaveLab. You don't worry about this. We all know this. You don't worry about your master outputs. You're recording first, all right? So you go to your options. You go to preferences. You go to your audio device. 
and this is what you're going to have to configure first all right don't worry about your playback device that's not what you're interested in it's your recording device and as you can see here i've got sound mapper and my two existing pre-selected systems now if line in was selected as well i would have three here i only have two all right so you select your stereo mix now your playback resolution is whatever you're going to need it to be okay if you're doing a high-res 16-bit cd master you're obviously going to run 24-bit audio 44.1 that's basic knowledge like i said i'm bewildered at this guy who doesn't know this sort of stuff because i know it and like we say here if i know it we all know it all right so don't worry about your playback resolution your buffer size and your buffer number you can keep them i i keep mine at 6 and 16 384 okay i don't i don't need to play around with that there's no need to especially if you're working in a wave scenario okay you don't need to if you're working in um mp3 you may want to muck around with it a little bit okay your playback cursor you want that at your audio driver's location basically don't, so don't muck around with that leave that as it is and the correction leave it at zero samples all right you want it where it is okay and just leave all that selected as is don't worry about your azo stuff either and if necessary yes convert mono to stereo so that in a playback scenario you've got two tracks and you can add effects to the right track if you wish you don't have to you can if you want okay so we now bring up our recording window and you can see here i've got auto start and stop already set that's by default i do that anyway but as you can also see the meters are not moving because i'm on stereo mix if i was on microphone these would be moving all right you want your audio input to be the hardware regardless of whether it's a line in input a mic input or stereo mix all right you don't want it to record that okay you want it to record that and leave it in a temporary file and then select that by default i normally rec i normally come in at cd quality 44 116 okay your settings are what you need to adjust now you can see here i've got it set at minus 30 db okay let's muck around with that a bit and let's see if we can get this to trigger at minus 10 and i'll show you what will happen then you've got your auto stop detection all right as you can see here i've got it to stop at minus 36 db okay your uh, record previous samples i leave it at half a second but you can change it to whatever you want depends on whether you need pre-roll or not this this is we all know this sort of stuff I, sh I can't believe i'm doing this video so just leave it as is depending on like i said depending on how much pre-roll you need all right and you don't have to worry about your time options unless it's absolutely necessary you want your meters to activate upon the window you want to see what your input is especially if you're going to start a pre-roll all right so you want to leave all that as is the azo driver uh it's up to you take your pick all right and what we're going to do here you can see here i've got win amp at 50 percent the auto start is minus 10 db now we've gone through this before all right this this is computing 101 you can't go over zero db fs all right it's not the same as the old dbvu dba dbm okay once you hit zero db fs that's it you can't go over we go into digital distortion anyway all right so what we want to do is you can see there it's waiting to record okay so we've got auto start auto stop we'll bring this up this is at 50 percent half the volume And you can see wave lab is still waiting to start okay now at the same time if i stop that wave lab's still waiting because it hasn't detected a signal so it's not going to start then stop okay let's bring that all the way up now remember our trigger volume is minus 10 db so 
Still hasn't got there yet. But if we go in further, you can see there it triggered and started recording. Okay? Then if I stop it, you can see there, there's the, there's the waveform there. It detected a minus 36 dB drop off and stopped. So now what we do, we've got Winamp at 100% of volume. Go back to the recording, go back to the settings and let's trigger it at the same trigger as the silence, minus 36 dB. All right. Wave Labs waiting. And you see there, it's gone straight into record mode. All right. Because the initial kickoff hit above 10 dB. Now you can see there, it's as low as 12 dB. Down. I should say minus 12 dB. You've got to remember, this is a scale of 0 dBFS. Now we all know what dBFS is. We all know what dBA is. We all know what dBm is. And we all know what dBVU is. We had dBVU for decades. Now you can see there, I'm getting very close to zero dBFS. If that was to hit zero dBFS, which I can do here, or maybe not, maybe the track's still a bit too quiet. Yeah, it is, it's a limited track. That's a shame. Oh well, you get the idea. So now, let's see what happens when I stop stop it. As it falls down. And there's our waveform. Now we can maximize that out. And you can see how it, it is literally hitting the hard limit. Now this is a <clears throat> limited track as it is. We all understand limiting and hard limiting, so I'm not gonna go through it. Um, but as you can see there, it stopped. And then in here, this bit here is the volume dropping down to minus 36 dB. Now you can trigger it to stop at eight dB if you wish. But if, you, if you've got a long fade out to occur from the existing two track, you're, not, you're gonna wanna finish that fade out before you start making mods to whatever it is you're gonna mod. All right. So like I said, this is this is simple stuff. I know this stuff. Now, for those that don't understand how I can know this, you got to remember I've been playing around with audio stuff a lot longer than computer hardware. I was mucking around with audio editing and multi-track back in the Cool Edit days. Remember the Centrillium Cool Edit? That got taken out by Adobe and is now technically Audition. Now I know a lot of people say you can use Audacity, but you've got to remember the one thing I've got with WaveLab is I've got my DirectX and my VSTs. All right, now I don't have RTAS installed because I'm not using Pro Tools. That's fairly evident. If I was using Pro Tools, I'd probably have both VST and RTASs installed or just RTASs, all right? So there it is, a KOSS tutorial on how to get WaveLab to auto start or auto trigger or whatever you wanna call it on an audio input signal. Now that pertains, like I said, to whether you're doing a stereo mix, so coming off a, a source like Winamp or VLC or something, but also off an external input now you'll notice I didn't play around with the mixer settings in WaveLab. If I'm recording into WaveLab from an external source, say a line in source or something, I'm using my Yamaha 2R to adjust the input levels. All right, I'm not using the Windows uh, volume control on the input or WaveLab's own mixing control uh, mixers, which is here. All right, you can see there that I don't touch these; they stay as they are. They're essentially at Unity, all right? So I use the source volume control to match those DBFS VU meters, or, sorry, DBS, DBFS 
meters to make sure I don't hit zero dB FS, all right? MV5, who we all familiar with, very dear friend of mine, um, he knows what I do in a dry record, okay? Um, I don't go all the way up. I leave myself headroom, all right? It's not so critical in analog, all right? Because you could, we all know how hard you could drive analog recording on a two track, a 24 track, eight track, four track, even old cassette, you could drive it right up. Digital, you can't, okay? So I always leave myself about somewhere between minus two and minus three dB FS in a dry record. And that's, that's whether it's two track or whether it's multi-track, but that's just me. Other engineers will drive it hard. Some engineers will add dynamics over the top of the initial bed tracks being recorded, all right? I dry record. The reason I, I personally dry record is, to give you an idea, if I was to go to a recording studio and record a group, okay, four, five, six piece rock group, there would be no dynamics on the record. I'd leave the dynamics to the mix down engineer so that he can muck around with them more than if I add dynamics on a dry record, whether that's to the drum kit, whether that's to the vocals, whether that's to the guitars, or your keyboards, whatever. I dry record. Okay, some engineers, yes, they'll add some dynamics onto the drum kit, or if it's just bed tracks, um, they may add dynamics onto, you know, or, or even a, a um, gated trigger between the kick drum and the bass, which, like I said, if I know how to do it, we all know how to do it. Um, so that that's just how I do it. But in two-track mastering, all right, if I'm given a disc of a mix down or, or a mini disc or, or a, um, a, a, a production, a, a mix down CDA, all right, or, or a WAV file that comes on USB, I'll import it or I will re-record it in from an external source to make sure I've got the right volumes that suit what I do. So there we are. KRWS tutorial done. That's about it for the day here at the Backyard Tech Channel. If I get time when I get home this afternoon, I will get a video out of what's in here. If not, I will catch you tonight at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight, Australian Eastern Standard Time, sorry. I've now got to go back to normal time, don't I? Australian Eastern Standard Time, GMT, UTC, plus 10 for the TBIM edition of the Backyard Tech Channel Livestream Conversations. Enjoy your Monday, guys, or at least try to. Cheers.